This is Today's Business Leaders, actionable advice from real-world professionals. And now, here's your host, Gabe Arnold. I'm excited today. We have Jonathan Grabowski on the show, and he is the founder of Penji. Uh, welcome to the show, Jonathan. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, Gabe. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to hear your story. We've we've chatted off and on, and I know it's on your show, which I super appreciate. Um, so now we're going to hear a little bit more about what you have going on. Yeah. Um, to start off, the only kind of traditional formal thing I do on my show is I ask everybody the same starting question, um, and that is, when did you first realize that you were an entrepreneur? You know, I, I don't, I think I was trying to be an entrepreneur before an entrepreneur was like this cool fad that everybody is experiencing now. And I hope that's not like a generic answer, but I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was. Um, I think I was six, uh, 14, somewhere around 14 to 16, um, freshman year of, of, uh, of high school. And I was just trying to make money. I was just trying to be like, well, I want to be able to have freedom and I want to be able to make money. And we just mow lawns. So it was the most uh, typical entrepreneur story of just going out there hustling. I remember the days back when, when uh, it was like hundred degrees outside and um, you know, we were making a, a, a ton of money. I think we're charging like 20, 25 bucks a lawn. It's a huge lawn uh, in, in New Jersey, huge lawns that in my development at least. And um, I think we had about like 40 lawns that we were doing on a, on a weekly basis. So we were making nice. a butt ton of money. <laughs> and, um, and, and I just remember a hundred degree weather days. And, uh, I remember my mom, I, I couldn't even drive. My mom would come in bring us like Gatorade. Uh, and I'd, I'd give her the money to buy us Gatorade and, and, uh, and junior bacon cheeseburgers and we would <laughs> like, take our breaks and just eat food and, and, you know, go back to mowing lawns and start it all over again the, the next day. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's always good, good experience to get out there and, and start that way. I, I had, uh, did a lot of construction cause that's what my grandfather's company was. So that's kind of what I got, got into as a teenager. So I can relate. Yeah. yeah I remember, I remember, uh, when talking to you, uh, on my podcast and talking about how important your family was, uh, family meant to you. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's good to kind of get that hands on quote unquote, the hands on experience, because I think it, and just, I'll speak for myself and maybe you can speak to it too. But for me, it, it taught me my work ethic. Um, yeah. it, it laid the foundation to, uh, what I wanted to do uh, in my life. And that's just work really hard every single day and don't need a break other than just eating junior bacon cheeseburger. I haven't eaten many junior bacon cheeseburgers since to be honest, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember eating up SpaghettiOs on my dashboard. That's a, that yeah. was, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had SpaghettiOs in a minute either, man. I need to get on that train. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely when you figure out that it, you're exactly right. Like entrepreneurship to me is just freedom of time. It's like you can work all, all the time if you want, or you can take time off, or you can invest in the things you want or give to the you know, charities that you want to be a part of. I mean, that's just, it's nice to be able to make your own schedule and do what you want. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how did that give us the short version? How did that lead up to the uh, creation of Penji and tell us a little bit about what that's all about? Yeah. So Penji is an unlimited graphic design uh, SaaS service uh, all at one flat monthly rate. And we got there by a lot and a lot of failure. So I think the last thing that you said was something about charity and giving back and having that freedom. Um, we were a design agency for the past five plus years or so. Um, and I can confidently say that we did an amazing job and we worked with a lot of great people and a lot of great clients, but at the core identity of what the, that organization was, it was just a shell of a business. It was uh, the only reason it existed was to make money and was to provide a service. There was nothing more, there was nothing less. And to work, every single day and as hard as uh, you, you know that you work and I'm sure all the people listening are, it is such a draining way to live your life. It's a draining way to, uh, to, to do business. So, <clears throat> and, 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 and on, to add on top of that, our personalities didn't fit the agency lifestyle and business model. And anybody that owns an agency or works for an agency, uh, you know that one client you're working on one client at a time, sometimes, 
um, and all of your resources and allocation are dedicated or, or they're allocated to uh, that one customer. So if you're doing a website uh, development and design, which is what we did, it could take anywhere between, ideally it would take three months. Realistically, it would take six months to a year. Yep. Um, and so <laughs> there's that aspect. And then the marketing aspect of it, which is what we also did was, well, what if we prove results? And sometimes we prove it, provided results and it wasn't up to the standards of what the client wanted. Um, but I can say one core consistent thing that we were always good at, which was design. That was the only, that was the one thing that people genuinely loved about what we did. They said, you know what, you didn't deliver on this and it took a while to do that, but Holy crap, this looks amazing. And we started thinking about our, thinking that, uh, to ourselves and like, okay, well, listening to our customers, we're constantly providing and hearing that good feedback. What can we do? So we created in the, in the process, created a tool that what is Penji today and allowed us to kind of scale our own internal design team. Um, and fast forward, uh, April of 2017, that's when the idea officially came about. Um, then on October 21st, we officially launched and um, once we officially launched, we had the software going. It was like beta 1.0. It was nothing crazy to, to you know, to brag about, yeah. um, but it worked and it worked well. And we, we provided the service. And then next thing you know, people are starting to catch on. We, we started doing a ton of research to find out who our customers are. And now we are, in my opinion, an incredible organization that not only delivers on service, um, but also delivers, uh, we're, we're now a socially conscious organization as well, which is probably to me the most important aspect of our business because we stand for more than just the service um, that, we, that we've created. Uh, we have meaning now, we give back to our community, we're engaged with our community and, and so on and so forth. And I'm sure we'll be able to talk about all that later on in the show. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome, man. So you go from the traditional agency life, which I know all about, and you definitely have lots of challenges to transitioning to being a subscription business. And you said you launched in October last year? <clears throat> October, yeah. October yeah. 21st was the first day. So, and then you mentioned um, in your notes before the show here that you said you guys grew in three months, you got 200 customers? Yes. How did you do that? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I'd say it's a combination of a couple of things. Um, and there's not one thing that necessarily worked, but I can say there's been a theme. So at the time of the agency, we had about 10 to 12 people, right? Um, and mm -hmm. we were growing and, and, and again, having fun. But it, as mentioned before, we kind of just plateaued and, and laid stagnant. Now we have 23 people. And the one thing that I can say and I'll kind of summarize it and I'll, I'll expand, but um, to get your first couple hundred or hundred customers, do something that is completely unscalable. So everything that we did was 100% not scalable. We kind of just like started throwing stuff at the fan and to try to see if it worked. And some things were dog crap and there's other things that worked really well. And then you, you have like the advertisement stuff. Some of the advertisements were working, some of them weren't. Um, then you had the remarketing and the remarketing was working and some of the Google ads were, then you had the community aspect and the networking. I mean, the list goes on and on, but everything that we did for the first 200 customers was, wasn't scalable. Um, the second thing in particular was uh, goal setting within the organization. So if you have employees, whether they're um, physical or whether they're remote, we have the opportunity to hire uh, physical beings in the office uh, that come to an office every single day, we had to re-educate the entire team to get on the same page. So we had silos and all organizations have this. They have silos like you do this, you do that, you do this. And then you kind of come together at the end of the day in order to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. What we did was we held everyone accountable for all of their actions. So if an uh, we don't really call employees, but if a team member were to say something like, uh, I wanna be able to reach out to 50 people today. Okay, what does 50 people look like? And then at the end of the day, did you achieve your goal? Yes or no? And if they didn't, then why? And if they did, awesome. What can we do to be better? What did you see? What were the results? All that stuff. So we created 
another software that's special to us that allows us to track all of the clock in, clock outs, and then also the, uh, the goal setting. So each goal has a particular point standard um, based off of the time constraints that they do. And it's a lot easier to track and it's a lot easier to hold everybody accountable to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. And, and then not, not only that, but we can give them goals too. So if we know that they're special, they're, that they're special in a particular area of business, we can say like, hey, reach out to 100 people and, do, and, and use this script or uh, whatever and, and track the results. So uh, I can always expand if you have more uh, questions on top of that, but I'd say those are like the main things is just that focus on that one singular thing rather than working as an agency and being like marketing, website, design, app design, all this, all that. It's now just Penji and how do we drive more people to the website to obtain a, a customer? Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. So did, so would you say like your whole team is involved in sales or is it just certain people on the team? The whole team has some aspect of sales, whether that is marketing, whether that is press, whether that is um, cold email, what is it, data, data uh, generation, referrals of the internal customers that we have, getting on calls with people, again, unscalable, or at least if it is scalable, it's extremely expensive. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, every single person knows that they have to do some form of sales, even if it's not like the traditional cold calling and all that other right. stuff to get your name out there. Nice. How did you, how did you kind of come up with that idea? Did you decide like we all to make this work, it has to happen or is, did you read about that somewhere or how did, how did you get to that point? Cause that, that's, I would say that's kind of non-traditional. That's not what you would expect out of a company. Like everybody actually does sales, People yeah. say that, but doing it is different. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think it's like a survival type of thing. Uh, you kind of have to say like, well, what has worked in the past and what hasn't worked in the past and mm -hmm given the experience of what we had in the agency, um, nobody was working on, on the same page. You know, it was this, the, the, the small conversations of the team and then the, the larger conversations when we have meetings and stuff like that. But now everybody is on the same page. And we did something that was relatively controversial. Um, we actually fired everybody in the company and then we hired everybody right back. And, that was extremely controversial in all aspects of business because, um, you know, there's emotions that are involved and, but, but we wanted to do that not to embarrass anybody, but more so to get everybody on the same page because we are shedding our skin, so to speak. So we had to get rid of the past and we had to completely forget what was going on before. And so we can focus on the future. So we gave every person in our, in the company a clear guideline of a KPI, which is a key performance indicator of how they're going to be able to be measured for, to grow within the business, but more importantly, a title. Uh, and then, and then the last thing is just like what it is that they're expected to do on a daily basis. So they know that they can go into this, into the office, whether I'm there or somebody else, uh, my co-founder is there. Um, we're all together working on the same common goal, which at the end of the day, yes, is to drive sales and to raise awareness about Penji, but the fact that we're also a community conscious organization as well, it actually makes everything more fun because we, I mean, we've always cared about our customers, but we care about every single person, whether they're paying us uh, $349, $698, or even $1 a month. Um, because we actually have a community program for uh, nonprofits in the city of Camden, um, which is our, our home city where we give all nonprofits uh, in the city of Camden uh, our services for $1 a month. And that alone has allowed us to expand rapidly because of the referrals and because of the press that we're able to obtain from it and, and, and so on and so forth. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Fire everybody. <laughs> so did, so you bring somebody in, did you fire everybody together in one group or did you bring one person at a time, fire them and then say, Oh, and I'm hiring you again. How did that uh, work? <laughs> yeah, it was every, it was one person at a time. Um, we tried to make it, I mean, we just wanted to make it real. You know, mm -hmm. we just wanted to be able to say to people like, Hey, um, you're like the conversations were very like, this is no longer this and you're not doing this anymore. Um, you're gone from here and this is what your new role is. And this is what your new objective is. 
wear this t-shirt, you know, welcome to Penji. Um, it didn't exactly happen like the t-shirt thing, but, but that <laughs> happened like a couple of moments later, but that was still that, that asked that mindset of just shedding the skin. Like that was what we were, that was the objective, just shedding the skin of, and then moving on to, to what, what we know is the future of our company and also the future of the agency business model, um, yeah. which is that, I mean, you know, I mean, you, you do it as, as well in, in your business, you know, where, where everything is headed. Um, yeah. it's going to be really expensive to, to hire people to write content for you. I mean, you, and we're a customer of you guys and honestly, yeah. you guys are doing incredible, incredible work. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, it's, it's just, that's, that's what we believe is the model of the future. And, and we're excited to, to be on the forefront of it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think it's like specialization and convenience and subscription based things are just such an easy business model for everybody. Not, I love the reoccurring cash, you know, flow of, of a business like that. That's like, that's great from a business perspective, but it's, it's actually just as good from the customer perspective because you're not hiring a, you know, six, $800,000 a week copywriter, you know, when you could get the, basically the same thing from us. So it's like efficient for everybody. It's like, I feel like it's economically responsible across the board. There's not waste on any side, you know, yeah. which is, which is definitely nice. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's pretty, I just think it's pretty interesting. Um, how old are you? I'm 29. Okay. Yeah. I thought I'm, I'm 35. And, um, I think it's pretty interesting that you, you were able to see like it, it, when you, when you launched Penji that you had to kill the old idea, you had to fire everybody, you have to let that go. And, and that's really unique. And, and I think you're right. It really gives a, you know, fresh perspective and starting over and like, here's, this is who we are now. It really creates that new identity. And it reminds me of something that I've thought a lot about and I'm curious because um, you're only, you're only what, five months, four months in, five months in, <laughs> um, not real, not real far in yet, but with that kind of like insider strategy, it makes me think of something I think a lot about is that's what happens like a year or two or five years from today when my idea, which is, you know, subscription copywriting and your idea, subscription design is dead. Let's just say something happens and it's no longer relevant. Mm -hmm. how are you going to pivot? And I, I don't know the answer to this um, for my team. So I'm just asking you too, but how are you going to pivot the team and the culture and everything that you built, which is the good out of this and helping the community into a new business? Have you ever thought about that? Um, yeah, we have. Uh, I think, so let's see. Um, I, I think the main thing that we're focusing on is staying ahead of our competitors. Like, Mm -hmm. There, you have competitors and we have competitors as well. And we're the new guy on, on the block, so to speak. Yeah. There are other people that I'm not going to name on this podcast, but they've been doing it longer and they have more experience than us. That's fine. Mm -hmm. For us, I think we've done a ton of research ahead of time. One to know where the market is going. We, we surveyed our customers and we surveyed uh, potential customers and we asked them, is this something that you would buy? Is this something that you would want? Um, I think a lot of our success comes within the software that we're creating because mm -hmm. like, the, we, like a lot of, if you're a customer, you'll only see a portion of, of what the magic of Penji actually is. A lot of it is behind the scenes stuff that a lot of you know, people don't, understand because that's just the way it's like Disney world. Um, you see Disney world and you look at Disney world and then you're like, Holy crap, this is a great experience. But you know that there's like trash shoots that get sucked under the, the ground. And you know, Mickey is like smoking uh, on his lunch break that nobody sees. <laughs> so like, there's a lot of stuff that you don't understand and you're okay with it because you have that a customer experience. So for us, we know our, our market because we were, we are our customer. Like at the end of the day, our agency, like that's what, why we created this because we knew that we could help other people like us. Um, mm -hmm. And so for that, it's made it easier. And our software isn't email driven. You know, we're not talking to people on email. We're not sending anything through email. And although that's good, that's great that some organizations can survive through that. But for us, we house everything in our network in in, in our software and our platform. And I think going forward, if something were to happen to the market, it we're already one step ahead because we already thought of the next five years. 
and, and I won't go into exactly what they are, but it has a lot to do with expanding on the service. And it has a lot to do with just know that we thought about it. And, and yeah. if, if any, anybody in business that is in the SaaS business and, 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 or is selling some type of subscription, even if it's for a small business, you need to be able to stay five steps ahead of the cur of, of your competition. And we've done our research. We signed up for every single one of our competitors. We figured out what it is their secret sauce is, what it is that they're lacking. And then we created something to, to fit for every single problem um, and good thing that our competitors are doing. So we just know what we have an idea of what they're doing, what they're going to be doing. And then we just have a, an answer uh, once they're able to release it or, or whatever it is that it may be. Cool. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a hard question. It's something I think a lot about is like, what will, what will I do to pivot or change or what, you know, economic or market changes. It's like, that's always something that I think a lot about. And fortunately with, and I'm just starting to figure this out after having the copywriting business for like four years, like I'm starting to see the patterns of all the good things that are working in there. And I'm able to pull that into other products and other businesses and, you know, just, you know, and kind of pivot that way too. Well, I, I was thinking some, Thing in this in this regard, like hypothetically speaking, if something were to go wrong, which knock on wood, of course, I I don't foresee that happening. Right. Um, and it's just not me being arrogant or cocky, but that's just me being um, mathematically driven and understanding the market. Um, if something were to happen, I can say for us in particular, because we are community conscious, we have the backing of our of our uh, of our community. So we, uh, our goal in by 2019 is to hire, t uh, 100 students of Camden, every single person in this, in, in our business, um, in, in the United States, of course, is Camden driven. They are uh, students of Camden. They were residents of Camden. They graduated some type of nonprofit program in the city. So that's like our commitment to our city is that aspect of giving more people more jobs because that's what people want, right? People want jobs. So yes, we will hire overseas when it's applicable to our business. Mm -hmm. However, if we're going to hire somebody and we've hired five people in January and more than likely we're going to hire another three people in February, every single one of those people are from Camden. So now that has allowed us to... Uh, our, our network and our community to know what we stand for and what it is that we do. And then as mentioned before, the, the nonprofit program that we have, um, we have a, a heart, large base of people that pay, pay for, uh, pay us for that, that dollar service. We understand we're losing money on it, but it's our way of giving back to the community. And so even if something were to happen, we still have that core base of people that know what we do and love us, even if it's, regardless of what they're paying us. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I, it's definitely, you're right, your network and the relationships you build, those outlast anything else. So yeah. that's definitely, definitely good advice. So who, tell me like, who's an ideal customer, kind of how the process works. If, if somebody's like, man, I could, I could definitely use, you know, a design team like this, you know, how do they sign up? What's the process? What do you, what's a good fit for you of like the type of work you do and what's, what's not a good fit? What do you try to stay away from? So I'll start with the, with the, what's not a good fit first. And then I'll end on what is a good fit. What's not a good fit are the people who we won't say no to it. Right. Because it's a business, right? We, mm -hmm. we can help people that are on that, that fit this mold, but we find that a lot of the organizations that, that are staying on our monthly service, the shortest are the people who are in quick sprints. The people who need to get a project done quick because they work, uh, they're working on their, their own business um, or they have like a task that's needed to um, just complete because it's like a website, they need a website done or an app prototype done or you know, whatever it may be. So I'd say those are the, the ones that aren't a good fit, but the people who are a good fit are the marketers, the agencies, the, mar the internal market teams of large organizations that need the, uh, that have an overflow of content and they either A, don't want to spend the time to do it themselves or B, they're paying somebody uh, 40 to $60,000 uh, for a designer to do high-end stuff where they can outsource a little bit of the, of, of like the, 
the below them type of um, uh, yeah. work. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, and they can just give it to an organization like us and not have to hire somebody else and not have to um, onboard them because that is a lot of money that people are spending nowadays on things like that because the onboarding process is so long. And um, so I say the, to um, recoup the, the whole answer, I'd say agencies, marketing teams, and, um, and marketers are our core demographic of people that we're looking for. Um, and then how they sign up, you just go on penji.co, you go to the pricing page, you find out which one works best for you, you, you click, you put your name in, your credit card, boom, and three minutes later, you will submit your first project and then under 48 hours, you'll be able to return, uh, you'll be able to receive your first design. Nice. And what type of designs do you guys like doing the best? Or like, what, give me an idea of what kind of range of work, you, you know, you guys offer on that front. So we offer every aspect of graphic design. Uh, we will be able to do a logo. We'll be able to do a website. We'll be able to do an app prototype. Uh, we could do... Google ads, social media advertising, social media content, marketing materials, flyers, business cards, uh, every aspect of business, um, as long as it has some form of graphic design um, aspect, it will, we, we can do it for them. And it's on a monthly basis of unlimited. And I'd say our customers range anywhere between, uh, receive anywhere between 10 to 35 designs uh, projects completed for them on a monthly basis. So it's not going to be one project, although it could take a whole whole month to do one project. Um, we act pretty quickly. And as long as our customers are communicating back to us, um, they'll receive the adequate designs that needed for their business. Awesome. Well, it's very cool. It's something I've, <clears throat> I've thought about before, obviously being in the copywriting end, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, being in the copywriting end, you know, I, I know what it's like to try to figure out logistics of like creating an unlimited service or creating that subscription base. And, and I think you've definitely hit, hit a good, you know, market and that's a huge range of projects that people get back. So it sounds like it could be super versatile in some senses. You can almost get a piece a day back if they're smaller and, and bigger stuff handled as well. Exactly. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, um, so obviously shared, everybody can check out penji.co if they want to learn more about the service um, and about what you guys are doing in the community there. And uh, so anything, last words before we wrap up here, Jonathan? Uh, thank you for number one, giving me the opportunity to, to be on your show. Um, if anybody is interested in being on the show, or excuse me, being a customer, um, well, if they want to be on your show, they have to talk to you first, not me. <laughs> um, but if, if anybody is interested in our services, uh, just go ahead and go on penji.co and enter the coupon code NOVA, which is uh, N0VA, N0VA, and we'll give you 10% off your monthly bill. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on, Jonathan, and we'll have you back again soon. Awesome, man. See you later. You've been listening to Today's Business Leaders with Gabe Arnold. Remember to subscribe on iTunes. For more information, visit todaysbusinessleaders.com. Yeah.